I've been living in my home. It'll be two years in November. So I'll be spending my third uh, winter in my home. I definitely would like to live in it for as long as possible. I'm completely off grid. I'm leasing the piece of property that I live on currently and I was lucky enough to get um, an acre and it's pretty secluded. I have some neighbors but we don't really see each other and I also have a little lake in the back that I could just walk through the forest for about a minute and I get to a little lake that's pretty private and so um, yeah I'm really loving where I am. I grew up in a small town and I spent a lot of time in the woods. My dad was a trapper, an outfitter, a guide. So I kind of grew up around all that kind of stuff and um, I really love the outdoors. So it's important for me to be close to nature. I feel the most at home in nature, even when I'm alone kilometers away from anybody, grouse hunting or picking berries or whatever. Um, so for me, I'm always gonna live in the woods. Uh, no matter what, the further in the better, <laughs> the less neighbors, the better. Um, it's just who I am. My house is eight and a half by 28, so it's 238 square feet, uh, not including the lofts. I had a contractor frame the home and then sheet it, and then the rest of it was built by my dad and I with the help of a few friends along the way. Okay, so um, this is my kitchen. I really wanted it to be open concept, so I decided to go with just a shelf on the top to be able to see everything that I have and also um, to feel like the space is less enclosed. I went with the same concept um, underneath. So I have my pantry underneath and it also has little containers you can pull out and get whatever you need from. I also have my kitten. So this is her little eating area too. <clears throat> and uh, I have a little stool so I can actually um, get to the things that I can't get normally up there. I really wanted the things in my kitchen to look good, um, to have a purpose and also to mean a lot to me. So when I was moving, I found uh, the box of dishes that I had inherited from my grandmother. So I don't know if she'd be rolling around in her grave knowing that I'm using her Christmas uh, dishware, <laughs> um, but that's what I use every day now. Um, so this is the stove that I chose. I really like the fact that it's a, a full size. Um, even for the small space, it doesn't feel like it takes up too much space. And this is actually a propane stove, so I could use it all just solely on propane uh, without using any of my solar energy for it. And this is my fridge. It's kind of built up on a box. The box is there because the wheel well went too far out. And I actually like the idea of having it built on a box because it elevated the fridge. Uh, this is only an apartment size fridge, so it's nice that it's higher so I don't have to go too low to grab whatever from the bottom. And it's a really good size. It has everything I need, lots of condiments. <laughs> and then the freezer too is a really good size. So this is my living room. It also serves as my dining room. <laughs> So dining room, living room, and also my spare bedroom, which I also call my apartment B. Uh, so when my nieces come sleep over, they sleep up there. And then if I have other people sleeping over as well, this is good for about two people to sleep on. It's the size of a twin bed. I really like the white and the blue because if I ever want to change my colors, all I have to do is change a couple of pillows around. Um, so it's less expensive. And underneath the couch is storage. It also holds all of my electrical panel, my inverter for my solar, and it has about uh, four totes with stuff in them. Um, all my seasonal stuff is under there basically. And then in this area, as you can see down there, it's like a little nook. Right there, the cat um, is sleeping under there once in a while, but it's actually made for a dog. So I'm hoping to get a dog in the next little while. So that'll be the nook for the dog. So it takes up about a third of the couch. So it goes up to here. For extra seating, I thought it would be a really good idea to have an indoor swing. Um, so I picked this up at uh, flea market and I can actually hook it up. Uh, right over here when I'm not using it, or I can also tuck it up um, onto the closet when I'm not using it. It's just great for extra seating. I usually have tea in the morning, answer emails from it, and yeah, it's really comfortable. So this is my little catwalk. Um, when I first moved in, I 
didn't really want the cat to be up in my loft. Um, so I didn't have the cat walk up and uh, <laughs> she was really upset with me about that. Um, so she'd yell at me every night, kind of looking for me. So I said, that's enough. I called my dad and I said, dad, can you come over? Help me try to figure out a way to get her up to the loft. Um, so we built this little ramp for her. Uh, we added a little bit of carpet here for her to be able to go up and down smoothly. And she goes up all day, every day. She just goes back and forth. So it's nice that she has that space up there as well. Um, so I'm glad that we put this up for her. So this is my heat source. So basically it doesn't have a thermostat, but it goes from one to five and then high. So I usually from December to about March, I put it on high um, and it's just propane operated and it heats the whole space really nicely. I don't need anything else to supplement for heat. This does the trick for me. The AC, I hook it into the window. It's just like a little portable one. Um, and I only use it probably in July for like three weeks maybe. And the space keeps pretty cool during the day as long as I remember to open up my windows at night to let that cool breeze through. So my solar system is four panels and so it gives me 960 watts. I also have a backup generator, so I have a 3000 Honda. And so from April until about November, I'm using my solar system primarily. The other months from November until the end of March, I'm using my generator almost every single day. Um, so I plug it in, in the morning and I turn it on for four to six hours, depending on what I'm using that day. So it works out really well. I think it's uh, you get into the routine of things and it's just like a part of your life. My other source of energy is propane. So the propane is for the washer dryer, hot water on demand, my stove and oven, and my heating source. So I get filled up with propane about four times a year and each time costs me about $280. So yeah, it's pretty affordable. And I really like to be self-sufficient. It gives me more satisfaction and I'm more appreciative of the power that comes into my home. My water is actually from a Sandpoint well. I share it with one of the neighbors. So I have running water through uh, my home and I also have a septic system. So I have all the amenities of a traditional home. For winter, it's kind of tricky because I live in Northern Ontario. So what I did was I ordered a heat trace line from heatline.com. Uh, it's something new. I don't think it's been around for more than about like five, six years. Um, so it actually goes um, from the inside of your house, it plugs into the wall and it goes inside of your water line. So that heat line warms up the water from the inside. And also on that, um, I wrapped it uh, with a bat of insulation. And then I made a box with two inch foam all the way around it. Plus that end of my house um, underneath my bathroom is also insulated all the way around. And then during winter, when we have a lot of snow, I bank the entire house just to make sure I'm never gonna have a moment where I don't have water because of freezing. My house is spray foam insulated, so it's good for a lot of things. During summer, it keeps my home cool, and during winter, it keeps my heat inside. The only thing with the um, spray foam insulation is that apparently it has no acoustic value, so you hear a lot more than you normally would inside of your home. Uh, let's say if a car is driving by or a dog's barking, so you hear it a lot more than any um, traditional home. The first home I ever owned was 3,300 square feet. It was a big, beautiful home, but as soon as I moved in, I realized that I wasn't spending any time in it, and also uh, the bills are also expensive. So I went through some changes in my life. I ended up being on my own. I didn't want another mortgage. I didn't want to um, spend money on rent to pay somebody else's mortgage. So I looked into tiny homes and I thought that would be the most ideal for me, also because it's on wheels. So I have the opportunity of living kind of wherever I want uh, with my job, especially. I'm a photographer, so I have my own business. I've been in business for nine years now, so I do that full time. So it takes me a little bit everywhere in Ontario. So it's nice to be able to have a job like this 
and live tiny where I don't have a lot of money to spend towards my cost of living. Um, so if next month for some reason something happens and I'm not able to work, I'm not gonna worry too much about the bills. So it takes a lot of stress off of me. I used to kind of like, I call it hoarding jobs. So I'd take any job that would come to me because I would be afraid of not making enough money in the next few months. So this allows me to be able to work and take that stress off. Uh, so this is my closet. I have a nice big organizer in here. Basically, just everything is folded and tucked away in the middle. And then I have all of my stuff that I need hung on both sides. And a couple of little hooks on the sides here for tank tops and whatnot, instead of using hangers for that. All my outdoor clothes, my coats and everything are also here. So this is all um, seasonal. So I don't have anything for winter in here. So I have a little shed at the back that I use to just like switch out my seasonal stuff, summer to winter. But yeah, most of what I own is in here. When I initially put all my clothes into my closet, I put the hangers on this way. So once I'd use a piece of clothing, um, I just put it back the normal way. Um, like we'd always do and so at the end of about six months I went through my closet and every hanger that was still hanging this way um, I knew that that was a piece of clothing that I never used um, so I was able to take that piece of clothing and donate it I also have my camera gear all my paperwork I have bins up there for other random things shoes uh, things for the outdoors, my hunting stuff in that corner, um, even a vacuum in there. So it really um, holds a lot. It's pretty much the same size as a normal closet would be in a traditional home. This is my really big tiny house bathroom. It's very spacious. I have a lot of area for storage. So I have all my linens, my extra toilet paper, all my stuff, um, and then everything else like medicine cabinet would be up here. I also have a washer dryer, which is really nice to have. The washer dryer is actually propane. I think it's a full size washer dryer. Um, so it'll do like my whole bed set in one shot, which is really nice. And then cat litter box, you can't avoid that. And I have my soaker tub. I always wanted a soaker tub. I really liked the idea of it, um, but everything was so expensive out there. You're looking at about like 700 up for a soaker tub and I needed something really compact. So I actually went to the local hardware store and I asked them, I showed them a photo of a horse drinking out of one and they ordered me one and I didn't tell them for what. Uh, and when it came in, they called me and I went inside the store and I actually got in and I sat in it. They all laughed at me and they asked me what I was doing and I told them that it would be my bathtub. And so I have a flushing toilet and I have a nice little sink. It's really convenient. I don't have to do an outhouse or anything. So this is my bathroom door. I'm planning on putting some kind of like frosted glass in here just so you can't see through but for right now I have a little curtain in the back here so when I need it to be <laughs> when I need it more privacy that I can just pull the curtain and the door. This door was actually donated to me by one of my clients. Um, she was using it for a prop at her wedding and it's really nice that it's on the rollers so it doesn't take up too much space. I decided to go with a painter's ladder for my ladder. I feel like it's really sturdy and I had a local welder take it apart and then put a plate on top that has a sort of um, little lip on it so it actually attaches to the bar right there. this is my loft. I ended up getting a mattress that is thinner than normal mattresses. It's just a, basically a foam, um, but it's super comfortable. It's just high enough for me to be able to sit up in bed and be comfortable. And then I have these skylights. So I love the skylights because I'm able to see the stars at night, which I think is a really cool feature. But also because when I'm up here, I don't feel claustrophobic. The skylights also came with... Um, little shades so once I install the shades it'll be nice in the morning um, instead of getting woken up by the sun but I don't really mind it right now so it works out really well. This space holds pretty much everything that's very near and dear to me. Um, I really wanted a headboard sort of and I decided to go this way so then I could have all those little trinkets and not have them all over my home.
So little things like my dog that passed two years ago, I have her collar and then I have stuff from my travels or things that were given to me over the years. Being able to be a little more free financially and not have to work as hard as I used to, um, it's allowing me to do a lot of different things within my community, um, in my family, and uh, volunteer time to help people out in different ways. For example, I am a farm hand on a reindeer ranch. I do that a couple of times a week. So that's really important to me, to have those connections with people and to spend time with people. Spend your life doing the things that you really love and with the people you really love. So I really implement that in my life every single day. Please share this video if you liked it. Also be sure to subscribe to Exploring Alternatives and check out our playlists for more stories like this. Thanks for watching.